Baker Mayfield got the block from Robinson, throws broken up. It was broken up beautifully by Devontae Harris. Welcome to the Sports with Aaliyah talk show. I'm so excited for today's episode. Devontae Harris from the Broncos is in the studio and he has the best advice, the best story to tell. So I'm so excited for you guys to watch it. So stay tuned. My name is Devonta Harris, cornerback for the Denver Broncos and a founder of the Wichita Kid Foundation. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm so excited to have you on because of everything you've done for Wichita. So we'll just kind of tell everyone about your journey. So we'll take it through the different phases. Yep. But first of all, can you just tell me about your ties with Wichita? I know yep. you grew up here, so. Yes, uh, so I grew up here in, in Wichita, um, went to uh, two different elementaries, three different middle schools and uh, two different high schools actually. So I've I've been all across Wichita and, and uh, on all different sides of town, but um, Wichita's home and, and, uh, and the whole Wichita kid thing is it just kind of transpired over me going to uh, like Illinois State was my first time away from home mm -hmm. uh, and I just really wanted to um, take a, a part of where I was from to where I was going and uh, be a representation of where I was from. And how was that transition then because you played at South High yeah. then going away from home for the yeah. first time ever how was that transition for you? Uh, it was hard at first um, just like like I said before, I was I was the only Kansas kid uh, to be at Illinois State, and um, I just had to kind of find my way. And um, I was way far away from home. I think it was nine ten hours. And when my parents dropped me off, they're like, "This is not just like a you can just jump in a car and drive home on the weekend. This is yeah. like you're gonna be here." So um, it was the first time where I had to like find my own way, and uh, I think it was a perfect place for me to do it. Mm -hmm. And what would you say from because you've played at now every level. So what yeah. was the biggest transition then from high school to college? Uh, it, it, I guess I would say it's more so of you just evolving to uh, who you are as a person. You, you have to uh, mature in a bunch of different ways um, and you have to learn how to prioritize different things and um, when you make certain things a priority that's what you're going to be good at. Uh, that's my dad, what I was preaching, what I always tell him is is what you prioritize is what you'll be successful at. So it was just that transition of learning what to prioritize and, and how to move forward. Yeah, and I mean, football's a thing where every kid that plays football says, oh, I want to play in the NFL, yeah, but yeah. it's it's very hard to do. Yeah. So when in college did you know, like did you know from day one that, oh, I can play in the NFL, or was this something where it's like, wow, like I can actually do yeah. this? Like was there a moment of recognition where you can yeah. actually do that? So uh, believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't grow up just playing football, like football was not my thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually played basketball and I, and I ran track. Um, football was something that um, I just, I went from North High, I went there my freshman year, uh, transferred over to, to uh, South High because I was like adopted by my two older cousins mm -hmm. um, who I considered to be, uh, to be my parents. And um, whenever I got over to South, the, the head football coach was asking me like, hey, you wanna come and play ball? And I'm like, whatever. Um, so it was, it was like one of those things that I was like, okay, I'll do it. And, yeah. and, uh, and as time went on, um, like my dad just all, uh, would always teach, like if you're going to be a part of it, then, 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 then give it your best. And that's kind of uh, what it turned into. It's just something that I decided that I was going to do. So I was going to do it to the best of my ability. So um, it went from um, me just playing football just because someone asked me to, to being like a career for me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, so now moving into the NFL, yeah. what was the feeling of – you know, getting drafted. Was it yeah. fifth round? Yeah, fifth round, yeah. Um, what was that feeling like? Because that's a dream come true right there. It, I feel like it's a dream come true for most people, but for uh -huh. me, it was like a, it was like a new experience. Because even when I got into college, um, like I, I just promised my, my parents that I would get a, a college degree. Yeah. And that was my main focus. That was my main drive towards doing what I was going to do. But again, like I said, if I was going to play football, it's going to do it to the best of my ability. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't even really know um, that or think of NFL as a possibility until going into my senior year of college. Wow. Like it was never really a, a thing that I thought of or a thing that I aspired to do. Um, it was just something, like I said, that just transpired just from um, just hard work. But um, it, it, it kind of fell into place. I had a bunch of agents calling me um, like going into, or like the, at the end of my junior year of college. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of agents calling and, and I'm like, um, like, are you sure you got the right guy? <laughs> like, all right, whatever. So uh, we, we just talk and, and one day I called my dad and I'm like, hey, um, like coach said that there's a possibility that, that I could get drafted and 
Um, I've had a couple agents call me, and uh, I guess you're going to be getting calls and visits from, from teams, so just be aware. And he was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, like, everything really happened how uh, they said that it would happen. And, um, yeah, it just – something that I kind of I guess I would say I fell into but not really like mm-hmm. I, I definitely worked for it yeah uh, but it was nothing it was nothing that I was just like as a kid just just looking up dreaming that I could be in the NFL so. and before we do talk about yeah. your time so far in the NFL what did you study in college uh, business administration was, was my major so yeah. what was what route did you think you were gonna take before you knew the NFL could could really happen uh, so initially I just wanted to to be successful i just wanted to be like my dad mm-hmm. um he, he he works it for coke industries right now oh, wow. um and like their invista um like program or i i, I don't know the exact uh, yeah. phrase whatever it is but um he, he was just like a like a huge role model for me and mm-hmm. I, I wanted to um, um be in his similar path and i wanted to be a role model to kids who were who are like me who grew up like me and grew mm-hmm. up like uh, uh, like a bunch of kids who grew up in the neighborhood that i grew up in um so Really, I just wanted to be a successful businessman and a mentor, and I didn't really have a gauge on exactly how I wanted to get that done. Yeah. Um, but I feel like life always puts you in on the path that you want to be on, and, and that's kind of how I ended up where I am right now. Yeah, definitely. So then you go to Cincinnati. That's yeah. super far from home. Yeah. How were your days there to start out with? Uh, so that that was that was kind of rough. More so, uh, it was my first time in the NFL. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know. Um, like where I was, depth. You mean like it was like it's like a whole new world. So yeah. from going from high school to college is, is a transition, like like this. Yeah. Going from uh, college to the NFL is like this. You mean because you're not only um, you're not only playing football, but you're playing football um, on the biggest level possible, um, competing against the best guys in the world, and uh, now you're you're on the business side of mm-hmm. like all that money. Been you mean moved around so it's more politics involved and, and you kind of just have to learn uh, how to be a pro and um, that was one of the biggest transition and I think uh, Cincinnati was more so like a, a transitional period of mm-hmm. me um, transitioning from this college student um, to this NFL professional athlete who had to try and um, find and organize his life in, in, in the public eye. Yeah. Which was, yeah, I definitely feel that. We literally study, I'm a sport management student, so okay. we study the exact things you're just talking about yeah. and how hard that is. But then, so this last season mm-hmm. is when you went with the Broncos, yeah. and how is then going from one team to a whole new team, how was that? Yeah, uh, I was actually at, at, at Truza yesterday, and I was talking to the kids about it, and, and mm-hmm. that was kind of uh, one of the topics that they wanted me to touch on. But um, it was definitely a, a transition. So the way that it happened, uh, is, is I say it was unfortunate, but it was also a blessing in disguise. I was actually cut from Cincinnati. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then I, I, the Broncos picked me up on the 53, um, and I went over and like I, I played just a special teams role initially. Um, and then I went and, and I was like game captain for one of the games and I uh, started for eight games and you know what I mean? So it was just a, it was a huge transition period for me just being, because my, my rookie year in Cincinnati, I was hurt. Mm-hmm. for 12 of the 16 games because wow. um, I hurt my knee. Yeah. So last year was really like my first year actually being like uh, in football. Like I was more so just watching from the outside looking in my yeah. rookie year. But this year I was actually in, in like into it in a, in a like a pretty good organization and I uh, actually got a chance to play football in a real way. Yeah. So. I actually didn't know that you were cut from the team yeah. and I feel like you know, when you're in the public eye, especially us back home in Wichita, like yeah. we definitely celebrate your success, but then you yeah. don't hear a lot about the hard times yeah. that you have to go through. Yeah. So what can you say to people that, you know, not even athletes, but anyone that, you know, thinks that it's the end of the world, like I just got cut and then you get picked up by a great yeah. team. So, uh, like I said before, to me, that was a blessing in disguise. And, and it's something that uh, you don't really plan for, but I, I, I feel like there's certain things that, that you go through in life where I went through in my life to where it prepared me for, for moments like that. Because mm-hmm. I feel like, uh, like I, I have this saying that if it's, if it's not bigger uh, than something that I've gone through, then it won't affect me. Mm-hmm. So like the way that I grew up is like, like my mom been on, on, like my real mom been on drugs, my real dad not been around and me kind of having to find my way. Mm-hmm. Um, so like moving from school to school, um, that was something that I had to grow up and I had to find my way along as a kid. So uh, when it got to a, a point to where I had to do it at a professional level, it was something I've did, done multiple times. Mm-hmm. And like the saying goes, like, if, it, if it's not bigger than what I've gone through, then it won't affect me. So yeah. um, all I needed was an opportunity. 
and they gave me an opportunity, um, and I took the opportunity and I ran with it. So um, that's amazing. Uh, and, and also, I like the a serenity prayer is a huge thing that that I kind of uh, that I kind of use in my life. I'm not sure if you know, but it's uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Yeah. So um, like I use that as as a part of me and a part of the structure on how I live and how I move in my life, um, and. There were certain part, aspects of that that I couldn't change, and the, and the parts that I could change, like like I took and I ran with them. I love that so, so much. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I feel like that really hits hard for a lot of people. I mean, I've been there when I something doesn't work out, and I literally am like, what am I going to do with my life yeah. about now? And then what comes after that is actually better yeah. than what was taken. From exactly. Me, so. Exactly. I just uh, one big part of of uh, what I take in my life now. Uh, and I, as a as a kid growing up, it's not something that you really learn. It's not a learned behavior, but I learned to meditate. Oh, and really? Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, like I, I meditate. Um, actually, I, I try and do it every day, and mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 become a big part of my life. And and I, I kind of equate it to like you, like meditation for me is taking old information and um, like kind of like pushing it but like pushing it away and, and like like going through and like fixing it and, mm -hmm. and pushing it to the side like basically like getting through like the old stuff but it, yeah. it makes room for new information to come in and for you to uh, access different parts of your life that you wouldn't be able to access as long as you're holding on to the old stuff wow so that's what meditation is for me it's like a it's like a fresh start every day wow yeah. that's amazing i yeah. need to start doing that too yeah. honestly yeah. but um last part here about the actual nfl journey it's a lot yeah. closer to home so have yeah. you tying it into now what you do in wichita like Denver, like, I mean, besides the Chiefs, you can't really get any closer. Exactly, exactly. So that's awesome. So how has the fan support been? I know there's a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans out there that are going to be watching this. Yes. But how yeah. has the Wichita support been for you, even though it's on the Broncos? I've had 99.9% .9 of the Chiefs fans be like, hey, like, I'm a diehard Chiefs fan, but, I mean, I love what you're doing. I love what you represent, and, I, I mean, I'll always be a fan of you. Yeah. Um, so, like, I've, I've had multiple Chiefs fans, like, buy my jersey. Like, oh. they, they, obviously, they can't wear it to the Chiefs-Broncos game because they're <laughs> diehard yeah. Chiefs fans, but they still support me, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they understand that I represent Wichita in a bigger way. So, even when I come out the tunnel, um, like I know there's there's fans that are from Kansas City or mm -hmm. from Wichita or whatever that that come to our games and when I come out the tunnel they yell Wichita kid like oh that's you sweet. know what I mean yeah so th that's what they all like know me as and so for me it's it's bigger than me yeah um, and that's my like mantra it's like it's bigger than me mm -hmm. so that's what Wichita kid is it's like a it's like a representation of my mantra of being bigger than me yeah so yeah. and that's the perfect segue to talk about Wichita kid yes a main reason I wanted to get you in here because there's so many athletes that are great at their sport yes. but it's few and far between to find athletes that are so passionate that they what they really care about is to give back to the community mm -hmm. so when and why did you start Wichita kid uh, I started Wichita Kid. I was in college. Um, I want to say it was like my sophomore year, and it wasn't really a thing. It was something that I just uh, created out of wanting to represent where I was from. Um, so I, I went to like Lids and I had them like stitch up me like a hat that said Wichita Kid on it, and I just wore it around. And at first, people were like, Wichita Kid, like, what's that? Like, Wichita, what is Wichita? They do like Dorothy jokes, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's kind of what I got at first. And, and, and I was younger then. So, th like, the better I got from a football standpoint, they're like, oh, like, that's actually pretty dope. You know what I mean? So, um, the better I got, the bigger platform I got, the more they had to respect it. Yeah. So, uh, it started off as a thing that was just me. And then it turned into what I considered to be like a movement. Yeah. Like, everyone wants to be a part of it. And, and the, the main goal of it was for me, uh, to represent Wichita in, in a good way and for mm -hmm. people to who are from Wichita to uh, be happy where they're from because you, you, yeah. you know you get a lot of those people who are like I need to get out of Wichita man Wichita this Wichita that and you never really have any anybody who pushes it in, in an agenda to make sure that everyone's on board on what yeah. Wichita is and what we represent so uh, I wanted to be um, I wanted to use my my platform to represent where I was from and to um, give those kids something to be proud of yeah so. and before i ask you more of that that's literally like growing up so i'm going to columbia university next year in new york that's awesome thank you and like growing up i'm always like i want to get out of wichita like yeah. i need to be in new york and even though i still need to be there for a bigger yeah. market for my job now like 
before the cameras were rolling, I'm like, I need more Wichita merch yeah, because exactly. I know as soon as I leave, I'm going to be even more proud of yeah. Wichita and yeah. where I'm from. So I love that you do that. Yeah. So can you kind of expand now on what Wichita Kid is? Yeah. And you do so many different things. And yeah. I know it's going to be impossible yeah. to sum it all up. But yeah. Yeah. what's the uh, gist? I guess to like to best sum it up is is uh, is I started it off, off three of my own principles, which is uh, to love, to give back, and to inspire. Mm -hmm. uh, and I created like a, like a committee or a board of people who uh, have those same uh, goals and, and same initiative uh, as, as, as I do. Um, and my biggest thing right now is, is like the business to community relationship and trying to uh, bridge the gap between uh, our big businesses here and the community mm -hmm. um, so kids can see, hey, this is what a CEO is like, this is what a CEO does, oh, this yeah. is what um, a graphic designer does, this is what they represent, and more so so they can just um, look at life from a different lens and, and have mm -hmm. um, mentors and, and, and guidance in ways that are like realistic to them. And uh, one thing that I never really do is I never go into schools and say, hey, well, this is what I do on the football field, this, these are my stats, this is whatever, yeah. you mean, like, like I'll tell them my story, yeah. um, but I'll tell them and I'll paint the picture of me as a full person because um, like, I, like I want the kids, the I want the girls to be able to relate on, on who you are and who you can become as a person. Mm -hmm. I want the boys to be like, hey, like football is important, but it's not my, my main priority because yeah. like football is, is like a short term thing and you have to have a life beyond that. But not only that, but you can be a great football person, but if you're not a great person to follow up on that, then yeah. you're going to miss out on a lot of goals and opportunities um, based on only being one sided. So I, I kind of want to. Uh, paint the the full picture and that's also what it is as well is is that's why i like like put out the merch and yeah. like I, I wear it and i represent it and that way people see like hey, hey what's that okay yeah. now I, like i was just in new york and i wore a hoodie like this and they're like what's what's the kid now i create dialogue now they know where i'm from they know what yeah. i represent and and different stuff like that so um i'm really happy that everyone's jumping on board in regards to, to what it is and yeah and, and i hope that it it, like, it it turns into uh the movement and the understanding that i want it to be and I know you go and speak to schools all the yep, time yep, or different yep, um, yep. organizations. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, I go and uh, I speak to schools and, and, and tell them my story and, and, and tell them um, like my path and like I like about meditate, like different small stuff and aspects yeah. about me and how to be a better person. That's a big part. I, I have a, relate, a pretty good relationship with the Wichita Children's Home. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love to, we're, we're actually putting together something right now um, and I, I talk to the uh, the C the CEO CEO president one of those mm -hmm. roles, of yeah. of, uh, of the Wichita Children's Home of Wichita, um, and they want to put together like a like a thing where the kids can do like a Devonte Harris workout. Uh -huh. You mean to where like yeah. I go and I interact with the kids and and mm -hmm. build a relationship with them, but it, it's more so of just like them seeing somebody who is doing really well who comes back into the community and they see me as a full person. Mm -hmm. So uh, like a, like a, just a quick story when I went up and I dropped off. Uh, like a couple hundred uh, uh, Wichita Kid t-shirts um, to the children's home. Um, afterwards, like, like, I guess there were about five boys who were up front, like high mm -hmm. school kids, and, um, and the president was up there, and, and, and she was like, uh, uh, like, these boys at first, they were like, like tough, like, ah, uh, man, we're, we're like trying to act like they're not super excited to come, like, to see me. Yeah. Because um, they were like, just, you know I mean, just kind of being, trying to be cool about it because they're mm -hmm. high school kids. Um, there's probably about uh, 40, 50 kids who got shirts. Then they then they went away. And then she came up to me. And she said, "Hey, um, like after you got here, the, the boys, their demeanor completely changed. They went from like looking like man, whatever, to when you got there, um, they were like super excited to meet you. They want to shake your hand. They want to take pictures." But she oh. said, "The reason uh, why did they why they started that way initially is because um, they're used to people not showing up for them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and you came, you showed up." Um, and you made their day because they mattered to you at that time. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the perspective, that's the understanding that people uh, may not get from just they saying, "Oh, you dropped off Wichita Kids T-shirts," mm -hmm. but now this this kid's like, "Hey, that's what I want to be like." Yeah. Like like he showed it for me. He doesn't even know who I am, but he came and he gave his time and he, he represented us in a bigger way. Yeah. So that's, that's the the type of stuff that I enjoy doing. That's so sweet. And yeah. I have heard so much about Wichita Kid, and that's one thing that people say is you do a really good job and it takes a special person to make every single person in a room yeah. feel important yeah. and special. Yeah. And so that's honestly, I don't think that can even be taught. Like that's yeah. just something I feel yeah. like a natural gift you have. And mm -hmm. I have heard about your ability to do that. Yeah. So what's been your favorite memory so far with things you've done for Wichita Kid? Uh, 
my favorite memory. Actually, uh, so I just went uh, to South the other day, um, and this is like I, like I, I do so much, um, so it, it'd be hard to like pinpoint a memory. Yeah. But so I went up to South, and it was probably um, 400 kids I talked to. Wow. Uh, and 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 what was cool to me is so like my my main goal is when I go speak to kids is if I touch one kid, then I did my job. Mm -hmm. If it's 400 kids and I touch one kid, I did my job. Yeah. Um, but I went up and it was about 400 kids uh, that I spoke to and it was, this was, I went and spoke to them at 2.30, school got out at what, 3.10. Um, there was like 100 kids who lined up afterwards who just wanted to meet me, who wanted to speak to me. Yeah. Um, and like, they, they could have gone off, they could have gone and done their own thing, but I had a bunch of kids who stayed after, mm -hmm. uh, who had real life, um, like, problems and trauma, who they just wanted an understanding. They yeah. wanted like, hey, like, I heard it, part of your story that you went through this. Um, what was it like or um, like what did you do to get through it or like um, who did you talk to did you have mentors who helped you through it so like I and I sat maybe like an hour after uh, like like whoever was there I was going to speak to you know what I mean but yeah I got to help a bunch of different kids uh, like one of the girls she was going through stuff at home or whatever and I was like hey like uh I, I don't know much about that regard, but I do have a girl that I, that I know that I trust who's a mentor for you who can mm -hmm. help you. So then I can push them out to different mentors, people that I know that are good people. Yeah. So, um, and, and I feel like if, if you don't go to those schools, you don't talk to those kids in a, in a real way, and yeah. you don't try and uh, work at their level, you'll never uh, truly understand who they are, and they'll never give you the, their full self. Yeah. So for 100 kids to line up afterwards, give their full self and be, be vulnerable in a way that I could actually help was like touching and, and big for me. Yeah, that's yeah. that's insane. Yeah. But so for people at home watching, I'm gonna ask you this question in kind of in two different ways. Yeah. If someone knows of children that they want to get involved in Wichita Kid, how do they go about it? And then other people such as companies that want to give sponsorships or yeah. work with you, how do they yeah. go about that too? Uh, you can reach out to uh, my assistant. Uh, her name is Jordan Parks. Um, it is, uh, her email is uh, jordanparks42 at gmail, which is uh, Jordan is spelled J-O-R-D-Y-N, uh, P-A-R-K-S, uh, the number 42 at Gmail. Okay. Uh, and sh she gets my schedule and, and gets it all knocked out. So um, anybody that reaches out to her, um, it's easy to get in contact with me because she, she uh, like formats it and makes sure that I know. Even yeah. that's how I was yeah. able to get in here. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, she does a really good job at that. So mm -hmm. uh, you reach out to her. Uh, anything that you send, the information always gets to me. Mm -hmm. um, but she filters it through to where it makes it easier for me to decide for, hey, I want to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. So, yeah. And then before we wrap up, you just seem to have so many different layers of yourself, yeah. and I love that. And I also see like you're doing music. So what are some other fun things yeah. about you that, you know, people might not know? Um, so how do you know? How to, oh, Twitter. Yeah, the Twitter. Music <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, so, so music is like a like a new like adventure that I that I'm just now starting, um, mm -hmm. and it's 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 something that. Like I, I've kind of always done, but I've never just like just gone to the studio and recorded. Yeah. Um. So I've done like two songs now, like my second song ever, and the first one I've ever done by myself was about three days ago. I flew in from Atlanta. I was training in Atlanta for a couple of days, mm -hmm. but I, I was on a flight and uh, I heard the song. And I was like, man, I, like I love the melody of that. Yeah. So then I started just like writing on my on the plane t t to the, the the instrumental, um, and then when I land, I'm like, I think I want to make like make that an actual song. So wow. I called uh, like one of my guys and jumped in the studio and it, and, it, and it turned to a song. It actually turned to a, did you, did you end up hearing the song? Or not, not yet, okay, so yeah. I'll have to do that. Yeah, so it turned into, it, it turned to a song, but uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I enjoy uh, poetry. That's one, one, of, one of the parts of me that a lot of people don't really know, just because I love music in general. Yeah. I feel like music is, is a love language and it's it just like a, a language in general. Yeah. To where, yeah. Oh, I love that. And then one last thing, what is some parting wisdom you'd want anyone that's watching this or anyone on Twitter, any, anywhere, just to know whether it is believing in themselves or anything that you preach. What's one last piece yeah, of advice? Yeah. So uh, I actually came up with this saying, um, just based on um, what I've gone through in my, in my perspective, which is um, your testimony is bigger than the moments that made you feel unworthy. Um, and, and that's a, a saying that, that I just came up with and it's, it's more so of me being a kid uh, who was a part of an environment where I didn't necessarily feel like I fit in. I didn't really understand why I went through what I went through. Um, and, and at times I felt unworthy, but I feel like the overall um, point and the overall picture and the overall uh, perspective that I got from it is bigger than 
like the moments that I felt that way. Um, so that's, I guess that would be one of the bigger things that I would take from it is, is your, uh, your testimony is bigger than the moments that made you feel unworthy. I'm gonna need to live by that now. Yeah. Write it down and everything. Yeah. And where can people find you at? What's your social media so people can follow along um, your journey? My Twitter and Instagram is uh, Witch Kid, which which talk is so it's W I C H K I D. Awesome. Um, both uh, Twitter and Instagram. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and one of my favorite guests by far. So awesome. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter and Instagram is funshell18, and you can like the Sports with Leah Facebook page. Thanks.